Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Sunday, the 11th of April, 2021. Glad to have you guys here. We are headed into the front side of something monstrous. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Uh, I heard Jerome Powell talking last night, and he was talking about the threat of inflation. And he said, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we can do as the Fed. We have tools to fight against inflation. So now they're talking about fighting against inflation. And so they alluded to what these tools are. And their main tool is to raise interest rates, to tighten monetary policy. These are their main tools. And the way he's talking, he's talking like if inflation starts to get a little bit heated up, which it is already, that they're going to use these tools. Well, you know, I got thinking about that for a minute. Hey, you know, uh, I got listening to Harry Dent, you know, and Harry Dent is absolutely right. He's been right all along. The market wants to collapse. It wants to fall by 80, 90 percent. If we take a look at the market the way it was uh, back at 2009, Go back to 2009 after the great financial crisis. Uh, the market was like 8,000 points. And ever since then, the market has been buoyed. It's not being buoyed on fundamentals. The market is being buoyed on stimulus. Uh, first it was quantitative easing. And now it's full-blown fiscal stimulus. And, and huge packages coming one, marching one after another, starting in March of, of last year. Uh, the first one was $2.2 trillion. Let that number sink in for a second. And they did uh, $0.9 trillion. And then they done, uh, I think it was, uh, what was it, $1.9 trillion more. And now they're talking $2.something trillion for infrastructure. Of course they're going to get inflation. But... It's supporting everything now at this point. Uh, what they've done is they've pumped the system so full of liquidity. They've created so much debt. And debt, the opposite side of debt is credit. So they've created, this is a credit-based economy. They've created so much credit. They've created such an enormous bubbles. So now they're talking about trying to uh, create deflation or, or trying to cut back on the amount of inflation by uh, by cutting back and, and trimming and, and uh, doing uh, 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 raising interest rates and doing doing all this what do you think the net effects gonna be if the Fed tightens <laughs> what's gonna happen maybe they don't know Maybe the Fed doesn't know what the effect's going to be, but I know what the effect's going to be. So I'm asking you guys, what is the effect going to be if the Fed decides to tighten? The markets are going to start to fall. Everything's going to start to fall. And it's got such a long way to fall. So so how's this going to work? Let me, let me try to figure this out with you guys, and we'll figure it out together. The Fed tightens because they see too much inflation out there, which they're going to see. So the Fed comes along and they tighten, right? They start raising interest rates, even on the short end of the yield curve, you know, the overnight rate and everything. They say they go up a quarter of a basis point. The market's going to start to fall like crazy. It's going to be like the, the, the taper tantrum that happened back during the Ben Bernanke era. Now, the Fed's going to sit back and they're going to watch everything start in the fall. And they're going to hope that it's going to stabilize. So that they can tighten some more. But I can tell you guys what's going to happen before they do it. It's just going to continue to fall. <laughs> In fact, it's going to gain speed. So the Fed's sitting back there and they're watching the market fall. Falls 5%. Well, oh, they're not too worried yet. They're not too worried yet. Now, if they were to step in, stop their tapering at 5%, and say, okay, we're going to support these markets again. Eh, no, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to support the markets. Okay? The market would go back up, but it would probably take a trillion dollars to bring the market back up if they let the market fall 5%. If they let it fall 10%, it'll take 2 trillion. 
to bring it back up. If they let it fall 15% before they step in, it'll take like $4 trillion. Are you getting the idea? The further they let it fall, the more it's going to cost them to come back and bring things back from the abyss. And in other words, it gains momentum. As everything is starting to fall, now all the bubbles are starting to burst. The further they let them go, the more momentum it's going to gain, and the harder it's, and the more traction it's going to take to bring it back. The more money creation. If they let it fall too far, and they try to bring it back, say they say they sit back and they let it fall by everything fall by forty percent, and then they say, "Oh boy, we got to we got to panic." They panic. They say it's going to fall down to zero. We got to step in. And they step in then, well, the trillions that they're going to have to create to bring it back is instant hyperinflation. So they're best not to let it fall in the first place. They're best to keep supporting it, right? Now, what if all this is just a bluff by the Fed? What if they have no intention, actually, of letting it fall, but they're... What if what if all this is just a bluff? They're they're not no intention of let of of tightening. It's all just a bluff. What if it's all just a bluff? Well, then we got to start thinking a little bit different. We got to start thinking why would they bluff? Because they're scared, desperately scared of the inflation that's starting to creep into the economy, and they don't have to stop it. So maybe they're hoping that a bluff will be what it takes to help stem the inflation right now. That could be. It's a, a distinct possibility that this is all just a bluff. But then again, it might not be a bluff. They might really start to tighten when they see the inflation start to come in in the next couple months. And like I say, the markets can start to fall, crash. And then that will be a trigger for inflation. So either way you cut this, Looking at the possibilities, like a detective. That's kind of what we're doing here. We're acting like a detective when we're looking at the different possibilities. Possibility number one is that the Fed is bluffing. And the only reason they'd be doing that is because they're scared. They're really scared. <laughs> Possibility number two is the Fed's not bluffing, and they're going to go ahead and try to tighten. And in this possibility... I say that as it falls, they're going to be more and more nervous all the time. They're going to be scareder and scareder as the markets are crashing. And at a certain point, they're going to have to step in and support the markets, and that'll be a trigger for hyperinflation. Possibility number three is, is that they tighten and that they don't step in. I think the chances of that happening is only is less than 1%. So I think possibility number two, one and number two is much more likely to happen. Uh, I think actually, I think the highest probability is, is possibility number two. Possibility where they where they try to tighten a couple months from now and they see a massive inflation coming. So the federal Fed Chairman Powell is not bluffing. I think the, that's the highest probability that he's not bluffing. And then in about two months from now, when they see massive inflation, they're, they're actually going to try to step in, stem the inflation off by tightening. I think that's the highest probability. And the markets are going to crash. Well, not outright crash, but they're going to start falling and falling faster and faster and faster, heading toward a massive crash. And I think at a certain point, probability says that the Fed's going to step in and try to stem it off. And when they do that, and all confidence is going to be lost in the Fed's ability to, to tide inflation. And what's going to happen then? People are going to lose confidence, and we're going to head very quickly into a hyperinflation. So I think the strongest possibility is, of the first two, the Fed's, not, the Fed's bluffing. And if that's the case, we're just going to see higher and higher inflation, and we'll probably move into hyperinflation sometime in, after the second quarter in 2022. And uh, uh, in 2023, will be hyperinflationary years. And I uh, that's one possibility. And the second possibility is that they do tighten and we see a massive deflation. And Harry Dent is proof correct for a short, very short period of time. If you guys don't know who Harry Dent is, he's a very famous deflationist. 
the de on all the deflationists are proved correct for a very short period of time before the Fed panics and steps back in and triggers the hyperinflation. I think those those are the two uh, highest probabilities. Uh, now the other probability is number three that I talked about, where the Fed doesn't they start to tighten, the markets start to crash, and they basically don't do anything in the market. They let the markets fully crash. The crash is going to be somewhere between 70 and 90 percent. And the system is basically going to start to lock up. Uh, and that scenario is almost, I, I just can't see it happening, guys. I don't see that happening. Uh, so it's no sense me even talking about it hardly because I just can't see that happening. So this is where we're headed right now. So what's the effects going to be on Bitcoin? Well, you got to understand. The second possibility I talked about where the Fed tries to tighten a couple months from now when they see massive inflation coming is the highest probability. And when the Fed tries to tighten, we could see a crash in Bitcoin as well as the markets. Uh, you know, and, and uh, it wouldn't, it's not going to be a long term. It wouldn't be a long term thing because the Fed, after, after maybe a few days or even weeks, uh, they're they're gonna relent. I know how to explain this to you guys a little bit better. You ever seen parents relent to the kids in the store when the kids start squealing for candy? You know the kid. You know at first he he starts crying kind of not real loud. You know and, I want that candy. I want that candy. You know and the parents willing to take it. You know, but then the kid starts to go absolutely berserk. Rolling on the floor, holding his breath, throwing things across the aisle and everything else. Well, what does the parents always do when the kid really gets crazy? Give him the candy. So what do you think the Fed's going to do, right? At first, when they start to tighten, the markets start to fall, you know. It's like the kid, he's making a little bit of noise, he wants the candy, and then they don't give it to them. Then the market's going to go crazy, absolutely crazy, insane. Then the Fed will panic, and they'll give them anything they want. And they got an unlimited printing press. So it's almost instantaneous hyperinflation if that happens. And so that would throw my a schedule for hyperinflation, which I figure is coming in the second half of 2022, that would move it up. So if the Fed tightens, that's going to move up my schedule. We could possibly have the hyperinflation before the end of the year if the Fed decides to tighten. This will move everything up. And throw a monkey wrench into my schedule because by by December, we could be in the middle of a hyperinflation if the Fed decides to tighten. That's going to speed up the hyperinflation, guys. It's going to bring it quicker. That's going to act as a trigger. Because do you re does any of you out there really believe that the Fed's going to tighten? They're going to watch the market start to fall, and I mean collapse, and they're just going to stand there and say, "No, oh, well, uh, we're going to continue tightening while everything is falling to pieces." No, they're not going to do that. And the reason why is is their jobs would be in jeopardy because they rely upon the system. They're the rulers. They're up in their ivory tower and and hustling along, going to their jobs and everything. Everything going as normal that can keep them in power but now what happens if all of a sudden the system collapses in the chaos I mean you get a 90% crash in the markets and everything's gonna go bankrupt I mean all, all of these uh, the fundamentals have been gone a long time ago It's just a no-brainer to me. They're not going to let that happen because it jeopardizes them and their position. So it's the same. It works the same way with a politician in public outrage. Okay, politicians will basically do what they want, but if all of a sudden they do something, they step over the line a little bit, and there's public outrage, and all the people are upset. Do you ever watch and see how quick they will conform then? To whatever it takes to bring the people back to happy again? Well, the Fed's the same way. 
And if they cause a crash because they're trying to tighten and they can see that, that everything is starting to crumble around them and opinions starting to turn against them, they will print any amount of money needed, necessary, to stop it. And if they do that, hyperinflation. I mean, already with the amount of money they've printed, they're already heading toward massive inflation. So, is that, it's the craziest thing I ever heard of them trying to tighten right now. <laughs> they they got to keep going with this. And we're going to get a hyperinflation, yes, but it's probably going to be a year or two away if they keep going with this. But if they try to tighten, they're going to bring the hyperinflation sooner because all they're going to have to do is step in sooner to, to try to quell it. And when they try to quell it off and stop it, they're going to have to create massive amounts of money that's going to trigger us into the hyperinflation sooner. I, I know this was, this was hard for me to explain it to you guys. It took a lot of talking to try to uh, put it all into words so that you guys can grasp what's actually happening right now with the Fed and their plans. But I think you guys got it. And you can see what a bad, nasty situation we're in right now. Because you know what hyperinflation's going to do? It's a hidden tax that'll rob your savings right out of the bank, right out from underneath you. And so I'm going to tell you guys, there's an absolute huge threat of this coming right now, and you need to protect yourself. And how you do that is... Get out of the dollar. It's a sinking ship. The dollar's a Titanic. And you need to get a lifeboat right now. And do it fast. Bye-bye, guys.